Good evening and welcome to the Cook County Bar Association's Live on CAN TV. I am your host, Attorney Mika Thompson, and today our guest will be Louis Powell III. Um, the topic for today's discussion will be real estate, and we have this conversation on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. every week to inform the viewing audience of legal issues and legal concerns. If you have any questions about this topic, please call the number that appears at the bottom of your screen. That's 312-738-1060. Now before we begin our conversation today, it is with my deepest regret and a very heavy heart that I inform our viewers of the death of former Executive Director Rowan Quinn, Gwendolyn Rowan. Uh, Gwendolyn Rowan was an attorney, she was a mother, and she was a friend. She was a very diligent uh, officer and executive director for the Cook County Bar Association for many years. And on behalf of the Cook County Bar Association, we send our deepest condolences to her family. Gwendolyn Rowan passed away on April 26th of this year, and her services will be held Saturday at the Gatlin Chapel on the uh, Chicago South Side. Uh, the funeral services will begin at 9.30 a.m. Um, Very nice person. So, thank you, and again, uh, the deepest condolences go to her family. She was a close personal friend of mine, and she will sorely, sorely be missed. All right, back to our conversation. Um, the Cook County Bar Association is the oldest association of African American judges and lawyers in the United States. And as I said before, we take this time on Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. to bring you information regarding uh, legal issues that are relevant to the Chicagoland and the United States. Um, today's topic again will be real estate. Now if you have a question about real estate, you can call the number that appears on your screen. But if you have a question that pertains to another legal topic, feel free to contact the Cook County Bar Association using our website that appears on your screen. You just go to Lawyer Referral and you will see a, a list of attorneys, their practice areas, and their contact information. You can also contact the Cook County Bar at the phone number of 312-630-1157 uh, and then press the numbers 21 to be connected to a staff member that has information about our lawyer referral program. Um, the Cook County Bar Association, um, you can send emails to info at cookcountybar.org or you can go to the website which is www cookcountybar.org. Okay. Attorney, Attorney Powell, how are you today? I'm doing pretty good. Thank okay. you for having me. All right. Um, we are privileged to have such a distinguished attorney to speak on the real estate issues. Uh, please, Attorney Powell, will you take a moment and, and inform the viewing audience of your background? Just briefly, first of all, we like to say Mecca, they're not making any more land. <laughs> land is a very precious commodity. I hope that our audience will take advantage of, you know, talking with us. If not you and I, just keep talking. Yes, we will. But just briefly, I've been practicing law for 27 years. Uh, worked for Harold Washington, Eugene Sawyer's administration, background city planning. I'm a small time real estate developer. I've taught uh, fair housing at the D. John Marshall Law School since 1994 and just enjoy just being here interacting with you as well as our audience. Great, great. So callers, if you'd like, if you have any questions about real estate, the topic is real estate, please call the number that appears at the bottom of your screen. That's 312-738-1060. Okay, our first question, Attorney Powell, is please describe the parties that are involved in any type of real estate transaction. Sure. Well, first we had a buyer, we had a seller, but also in addition to that, we have real estate brokers, we have the attorney, and we have the lender, and we had a title company. Okay. So your, for the audience, 
in order to have a real estate transaction today, you really have, it's more than just a two-party uh, conversation. Exactly. The same conversation. It's a team effort. It is a really team effort. So um, the lender helps with the financing. Right? Absolutely, because unless you cash ready, right, which most people are not, when I right. say cash ready, meaning you're liquid enough to buy without a mortgage, you, you need a lender. Right. Okay. And then the... Um, a term, the broker now is the, that is you formerly the real estate agent, right? right. You know, now time, time has changed. I got my salesperson license in 84. I got my broker's license in 1990. It used to be a time where there was a distinction between the salesperson and the real estate broker. Uh, the distinction was that the salesperson had to work for a real estate broker. A real estate broker theoretically can open up his office on his own. He can even be a one-man shop. But the way it is now, to my understanding, is everyone is a real estate broker. It's just you have different designations in terms of real estate broker. But the Reader's Digest version of a real estate broker is that they are responsible for showing the properties to the buyer. They are responsible for listing the property. That is, mean putting a seller's property on the market for sale. Okay. So they basically serve a marketing function. Is that what it is? Absolutely. Not only a marketing function, a realtor should, a good realtor... <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, find the code. A good realtor should show, give the indication to the uh, seller in terms of how much their property is worth. Now, it's not an appraisal per se, but it's usually more, more like comparable, showing how long properties that are similar to the subject property, how long they've been on the market, what they eventually sold for. Conversely, uh, the agent that is representing the buyer. Their job is basically do the same thing to give the person an idea in terms of what the properties are going for. Right. So a good real estate agent is going to be able to let the buyer or the seller know wh what the cost, what they will eventually have to pay if you're a, a buyer or a seller, what well, they you, will receive for their property. Right. Now, you don't want to say give, you know, give a, give a recommendation. Recommendation, Cause, cause okay. Because a good broker will give you a range, mm -hmm. and you let the client decide with your recommendation, of course, what the best listing price is. Right. Okay, and that's different than, for, than appraisal. Appraisal pertains more to what the cost of replacing it. Def definitely, and the different levels of appraisal. You're right, one level of <coughs> appraisal would be, excuse me, would be the cost of rebuilding it today. Another uh, appraisal is actually very similar to real estate comparables. Okay. And so there are different levels of appraisals, but a market analysis is what most brokers would do. Would look at. Okay. Very good. So now that we have an understanding of the pro the parties that are involved in a real estate transaction, Attorney Powell, can you let us know uh, what type of property are are uh, it, th what type of property can be sold? I mean, our th conversation today is going to focus on the commercial, the residential. What is what sure? Are we talking you about? know what? We can let's be a little flexible. Mm -hmm. We can we can talk about residential because I suspect most of our audience are probably tuning in to try to get tips in terms of buying a home, so forth and so on. Commercial is a little bit more sophisticated, but the ba the basic real estate transaction, what you're looking at in terms of the very beginning, most contracts are very standard. But as I, we tell uh, our colleagues, read it. Right. Okay. Right. Every so often, it could be something different. You really do need to read the contract even though it is boilerplate. Okay. All right. And what type of representation does a buyer or a seller need in order to conduct a sale of real estate? Uh, is it just the attorney? Do you even need a realtor these days? You need a team. Okay. okay. Uh, if you, let's, let's take it from this way. Okay, if you're the buyer, the, most realtors, most realtors are trained to figure out in a hurry how much their client can buy, meaning, you know, what their level of purchase value, you know, what they can purchase. Because no realtor is going to waste their time showing you homes that they know you can't afford. Right. Because right. it's a business. So the realtor, most realtors can do some type of analysis in terms of based upon the information that you are providing them, how much, you know, what you're, well, how much you can buy in terms of purchase price. Also, most realtors are going to, don't use the word steer, but they're certainly going to recommend you to some of their favorite mortgage people that can qualify you. And then you have, you have what you call mortgage brokers. 
mortgage broker's job is to try to go out in the market and get the best loan possible. A, a, a mortgage company or mortgage or bank per se, they're in-house. They're making loans out of their own you know, capital. But a mortgage broker's job is to go out in the marketplace to try to get the best loan. You as the seller, you want an attorney that's competent, that can represent you. Both parties need a competent attorney. In terms of the seller's attorney, the seller's attorney will be prepared the necessary documents, of course, the deed, after the title, so forth and so on, to research the title. Uh, we wanted to you know, make sure the audience is very much aware that the contracts are pretty standard in that most contracts have a period for attorney review. And Mecca, that is, that is very critical. Most attorneys, let's you have to be honest, you just can't stop what you're doing for one contract. No. However, no. If, if you give an attorney five to seven business days, that's more than enough for the attorney to take a couple of looks at the contract and not be pressed for time. And the attorney review cause is very critical because it allows the buyer to make an offer. An off a contract is an offer until it's accepted. So that puts you in a position where you don't have to wait for your attorney to re completely review the contract. It gives you the opportunity for you to make the bid. Okay. And then the clock starts running in terms of the attorney review process once the sell accept the contract. So now we're looking at the process that is involved in purchasing a, 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 a piece of real estate. And so basically what you're saying is that um, buyers can go out and place a bid on a piece of property before the attorney has had an opportunity to really review it. They can sign off exactly. on this contract, but that return, that clause in there that calls for an attorney review period allows the attorney the opportunity to review and make changes to the terms of that contract even after it's signed. Exactly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, attorney can only change so much. You really can't change the purchase price, okay? But you know what you're doing. You can certainly put the other side in a position that they may consider down the line reducing the price. But for all practical purposes, you can't change the, the purchase price. Everything else is, is open for what we call modifications. Okay. So, now, if a, 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 a buyer... Uh, selects a piece of property and agrees to a purchase price that is just ridiculous. Can the attorney, during the attorney review process, cancel the contract? That is hard. Okay, that is hard. Now, you just can't walk. Now, that's why, ladies and gentlemen, most sellers are going to try to get as much earnest money as possible out of you. Why? Say, for example, if you put down $1,000, even $1,000 a lot to me, Mika, mm -hmm. A thousand dollars may not kill you, and you may walk mm -hmm. and say, you know, I'm just going to walk because I may have made a bad decision. But however, if you put down maybe five thousand, that's going to make you have reason to pause before you just try to walk out of a contract because you made made a, a, a offer that was too high. Okay, so that that is an example of why a realtor is probably. Uh, you know, selecting a good realtor is very important because they will assist in making sure that you're not um, placing an offer at a price that's just not a sound deal. As we say in the business, you want your client to make an informed decision. The job of the realtor is not to say this is what you should offer. A job of a realtor is to show you what houses or properties are sell selling that are comparable so you can see a range. So you can make an informed decision. Okay, audience, we are talking about real estate. This is the Cook County Bar Association's Live on Can TV show. I am your host, Attorney Mika Thompson, and we have the very accomplished attorney, Louis Powell III, and we're talking about real estate. Please contact us if you have any questions about this topic at the number that appears at the bottom of your screen. That is 312-738-1060. Okay, continuing our conversation, my next question is, what type of agreements are involved? Now, we talked about particularly the clause, the attorney review clause in the agreement, but just so that the audience is aware, we're talking about a sales agreement, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and there are other agreements. Uh, we'll come back to that, but I want to at least break it down as far as the different types of agreements we that are involved in a um, sales of uh, real estate transaction is the sales the, the agreement to sell the property absolutely then you have your mortgage agreement correct, correct. and then you have the listing agreement correct okay. and the, and the listing agreement between the seller 
and a realtor. Right. Okay. So um, the first in the process of the uh, the whole process of selling a property, you first the first agreement that uh, uh, that's going to be so uh, signed is the listing agreement. Correct. That is correct. Right. You know, for the property get on the market, the listing agreement has the terms and conditions that the realtor will operate under. <coughs> Excuse me. And it also has how much the realtor will be compensated. Okay. And so that uh, listing agreement is usually um, executed by a realtor who's going to sell the property for the, either the buyer or the seller. Now, can you talk a little bit about those uh, provisions in the listing agreement that allow one realtor to, to really serve both parties? That is critical, and that's a very good point. No realtor wants to waste their time listing your property and good in the beginning of the position that you want to cut them. Because mm -hmm. this is a business, because people have been known to try to cut the realtor out. How can they cut the realtor out? Well, they cut a side agreement with the potential buyer by saying, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you wait a couple of months? Why don't you wait a, some time, let the property get off the market, and then you and I come to terms, and I would Ooh. discount the property, discounting it that I'm taking off what, what I would have paid to the realtor. Mm -hmm. Now, to protect that, most, most listing agreements will say that if the realtor can prove that they showed that property to you, or their, their, their marketing efforts were a result of that particular buyer coming to you, uh, the good realtor may sue you for his, for his right. or her commission. That's right. And I have definitely had a few calls from realtors regarding those terms. What about the dual agency clause that is in with Dual agency, okay, that's okay. Dual agency basically means that you can represent both parties. It happens a lot when you, the uh, realtor is the listing agent and he's, he or she is also the agent that brought the buyer to the property. Okay. That's a good example of a dual agency because you represent both the seller and the buyer to a certain extent and you owe both of them the highest level of fiduciary relationship. Okay. So in um, real estate transactions, that's an example and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to point it out is that of how it's a win-win. It's a little different mm -hmm. than most legal uh, transactions or litigation situations. Definitely. You're trying to, you're trying to strike a deal. You're trying to strike a deal. both parties leave the table re reasonably happy. Reasonably happy. Okay, it looks like we have a caller. Caller, what is your question? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I have a friend who is rehabbing property. He, he's buying tax delinquent property in a nearby community, and, and then he's rehabbing it. And after rehabbing it, he rents it out. My question is, why is he renting it out, and why doesn't he sell the property as a house outright? What is required for him to buy the tax relinquent property and then sell it as a house? Hold on, hold on, Carla. Don't hang up just yet. Now, okay. you're, you're asking about these are properties that were going to be sold or have been sold using a tax sale. Is that what you're asking? Yes, correct. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. That's, that's a sophisticated business. What the, what, the, what the person is doing is this, and you have to know what you're doing. Basically, what, what they're doing, they're bidding on the taxes. They're buying people's taxes that are delinquent. And what is, what's going to happen it went doing that process is a win-win situation. It's a win-win situation in that everyone has the right to redeem their property if it's tax delinquent. So when you see people bidding on property, it's a win-win situation in terms of buying their taxes because if they buy, if the person redeems the property, you will get back the money that you paid for the taxes plus interest. Now the good thing about it is every so often somebody would mess up, and when I say mess up they missed the redemption period and then they were able to buy they were able to get the house for substantially less than what the house is worth. So really. they missed the redemption period, then title automatically transfers. Eventually. To, to, to not not automatically. There's some steps you gotta go through, okay. but eventually okay. it does. Okay. Now what this person is doing, they're they're probably rehabbing the property. Yes. Ridding the property for a time period. It just depends on what your marketing strategy is. Most people you want to try to flip it as quick as possible. Okay. But some people's strategy would be, I'm going to hold it for a while, get some income off of it, then sell it. Okay. It's all about your strategy in terms of what you're trying to do. So, caller, in answering to your question, it really is up to the, the party that purchased the property uh, using the delinquent tax sale and now is owner is the owner. They can sell it. They can rent it. They can do. They are the owner, so they have the right to um, use the property 
in accordance with the law, but um, as a rental property or uh, to sell it. Exactly. Uh, my question is, uh, are there any special steps involved if the individual is to sell the property as a house? Because... The, the simple point is that selling it as a house, you will make more profit off of it because the person will have to pay you a certain amount of money down. But if you rent it, <clears throat> that person will uh, only pay you, let's, let's say it's a uh, uh, four-bedroom flat. Then, of course, you can sell each unit. You can rent it out, for instance, like... Uh, you can rent it out for four uh, for uh, one thousand dollars a month. But if you sold it, then that person would have to give you several thousand dollars down. What is required to sell the house? Do you have to have a real estate license? In other words, I mean. Oh, okay. 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 The answer is no. You okay. can sell the property by yourself. Okay, but right. most people are going to use the services of a realtor for a lot of reasons. Reason number one, the seller can market your property better than you can okay. because yeah. you have what's called MLS. Okay. Now, to answer your well, question, that everyone question. that's, that's an investor... Okay? Hmm? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Carla. Okay, go on. Okay, everyone has a strategy, Mecca. Some people's strategy is to rehab a property quick, mm -hmm. and quick means that you want to rehab before somebody breaks in and steals right. it, what you build. Well, some people's strategy would be to hold it for income purposes for a period of time. So a different strategy. Some right. people may have houses in their portfolio on purpose or buildings in their portfolio on purpose that they're holding for tax reasons for the whole income. Then at a strategic point in time, then they may sell it. Right. Um, so, so long as you have title to a piece of property, you can sell it without any type of other steps being taken. Um, realtors have the authority to represent other people in the sale of property as well as attorneys. Attorneys have, uh, as being licensed with the state of Illinois, we are able to represent anybody on any legal issue, whereas realtors are able to represent individuals only in, uh, in cases of real estate, whether uh, in entering into real estate sales or in real estate transactions. So that's really just the difference. Yes. Okay. Um, so going on to our next question, we were looking at the different agreements that were involved in a real estate sales transaction. And um, Attorney Powell completed his conversation with regards to listing agreements. Is there anything else you want to talk about with regards to those provisions of the listing agreements? That, that, that's pretty much it. Okay. And so we're going on back to the... The mortgage, just give them a, a brief description of what the you gotta, mortgage is. you got to apply. And ladies and gentlemen, be cognizant. In other words, be aware of the time period in your contract. It's three time periods that you as the buyer need to be aware of. First time period. Most contracts will say that you have to apply within X amount of days. No one wants you buying their property and not making an application for loan. Okay. Next period of time. Most contracts have a time period that you have to have your mortgage commitment. Okay, now this your, is the sales contract. Right. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the mortgage commitment means not that you apply for the loan, not that you in underwriting. It means that you have a commitment. What underwriting means is that you're almost close to closing. Underwriting goes through everything with a fine-tooth comb. They get a thumbs up in terms of you being approved to buy property for X amount of money for X amount of in, at X amount of interest rate. You are not approved until you have a commitment with no conditions. The third time period, ladies and gentlemen, you need to be aware of is the closing date, okay? The closing date is the contract date that you're supposed to cl uh, close on. Now, nine times out of ten, you may not hit that date, but you need to be trying to be able to close pretty close to that date. Most people, if you can make it in terms of the mortgage contingency, meaning that you have gotten the full approval, most people are going to be patient with you to a certain extent in terms of the actual closing date because they know if you got the approved, they know it's just a matter of the parties having a time to uh, agree in terms of the specific closing date. Okay. Well, um, this concludes our conversation with regards to um, the real estate. It looks like our time is up. 
I would like to give the last point to Attorney Powell. Is there anything else you'd like to conclude? As I said, ladies and gentlemen, they're not making any land. <laughs> it's a precious commodity. You can make money. You can lose some money, too. But you can make money in terms of being involved in real estate. And I encourage everyone to get involved in real estate. Very good. Thank you, uh, callers and our viewing audience for tuning in to the Cook County Bar Association's Live on CAN TV. We'd also like to thank our phone tech, Amari, for answering the phones for us. This concludes our conversation. Please tune in next Tuesday when we will be talking about another issue of legal import to the Chicagoland community. Have a great evening.